Freddy, welcome to Singapore. Thank you, Kirpal. Mm. Tell us a little bit about your growing up, you know, your, your childhood, uh, the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I was the first born in, uh -huh. in my family. I'm the eldest in the family. I was, I was born in 1953 in Santo Tomas Isabella. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember my, uh, when I was growing up as a child, I was about around five years old, mm -hmm. or four. I remember my, my grandfather was uh, the vice mayor in our town mm -hmm. and my father was the chief of police. And oh, wow. So I was growing up and uh, I was introduced as uh, the son of uh, the vice mayor, uh, the grandson of the vice mayor and the son of the chief of police. And right. uh, my father is always fond of me uh, because I can sing and dance. And, and uh, he always very proud when he has visitors. Say, come, come on, Freddy. Uh, sing something for our guest and, or, or dance something so I would, right. I, he would always uh, want me to sing or dance for his guest and right. uh, so those I grew up happy in, days, uh, right? yes those were the happy days and then uh, we moved to Manila because mm -hmm. my father was uh, uh, very sick mm -hmm. and it was only in Manila that they can cure him right uh, eventually he got got cured but he lost everything. He, he lost everything, uh, uh, the farm, the business, and everything. So when you were in Manila, Freddy, you grew up mainly with Marcos? Is he I like was, the first big president uh, no, you remember? No, uh, when I was him? growing up, it was uh, uh, just Dado Makapagal. Okay. Uh, that I was, uh, I remembered in elementary in, in, uh, uh, in Santa Mesa, Manila, where I right. grew up. Uh, as. Uh, I was there as, at the age, I think, of six or seven. It was uh, just Dado Makapagal, who, mm -hmm. who is the father of uh, uh, Gloria Makapagal, who became yeah, president, president later. later yeah. uh, was the president, and uh, we had a beautiful uh, public educational system at that time. And mm -hmm. uh, and I, st I I do remember also that uh, during that time the dollar is two. Ah. against the uh, uh, peso right. uh, uh, one dollar is two pesos at right. that time and and I think if I if my uh, memory serves me right uh, we were uh, second to Japan economically at that uh, during those times so you've seen Philippines I mean and the peso obviously and the go, better, yes. like go down yes in from from the best that it was until uh, it, went, it went down. And would you say this was just out to very bad economic decisions or wrong leaders or what, what do you attribute that to? It's, it's more of, uh, of uh, uh, too, much, uh, too much borrowing ah. uh, during the time of Marcos. That, that, right. th that's why the peso went down. Uh, right. uh, because we, uh, he borrowed so much money for whatever he intended to do with. Uh, and all of a sudden from from one dollar to two, it became one dollar to six, and by the time I was singing in Olongapo, it was already uh, one dollar to twelve or something. And today is one dollar to one dollar to forty-four or something. My God! Wow. Yeah. Now you you mentioned Marcos, and yes. I think it's commonly agreed that the first few years of Marcos were very good. Oh yes. And then something happened, and he just went from bad to worse, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, is that an opinion still shared by most Filipinos? Uh, sadly, no more. They, they were, they, uh, they, uh, you know, Filipinos, uh, we, we tend to uh, forgive uh, people. Uh, but I personally, I can also forgive, but I will never forget. Right. So it's, 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 it's uh, some Filipinos, they turn to forgive and forget. But, but I myself, no, I, I, will, I will forgive, but not forget. Because if you forget, then the history will repeat itself again, all over again. The reason for the downfall, I think, uh, is that uh, Mar Marcos was supposed to do it for the country. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, he realized that he's being respected by every Filipino. When he says, I want this, and, and nobody would, would even bother to, to, to contradict him. They just follow what he wants. And, and then he found out that he can control the Filipino already. And what he did is instead of continuing uh, the good two years, he decided to wait for a while. Mm. I would like to do it for myself first. So he started uh, building the crony. And I think it was the crony that really uh, uh, put the, the tarnished uh, on his name.
Right. Okay, we'll switch uh, gears for a little bit. Now, you grew up in a very happy, wonderful Isabella, and then because of your father's sickness mm -hmm. and the move to Manila, there were some stress points, yes, I assume. Yes. But nevertheless, your childhood is still a happy memory. Oh, it is, right? it, is, it is. And then you went to university, and you're supposed to be an engineer or something. I, I, uh, no, my father wants me to become a lawyer. lawyer because that's right. Since we are, a fa uh, we came from a family of politics in right. in, in the north. Right. And so uh, he somewhat wanted me to continue uh, uh, the legacy of being uh, politicos in right. my country. But I was uh, having another dream. Right. Uh, when I reached the age of 12, I wanted to become a musician yeah. already. I, right. I don't want to become like my father already. Right. But well, when I was younger, I wanted to be like him. Mm. So he forgot to ask me whether I would love to be a lawyer or not. So mm. he just dictated to me, you are a lawyer. Mm. I was thinking, no, I'm not. But <laughs> I cannot tell it to his face. So right. I was just uh, being quiet and uh, without him knowing, uh, I was learning to play the guitar, uh, right. and the guitar was not for me. Uh, the guitar was bought for my sister, my younger sister, right. because she needs it in school. Right. But after the project in school, the guitar is just hanging in our wall, in our <laughs> very small house in Manila. Right. So when my father is not around, I, I get the guitar and, and taught myself how to play the guitar. And right. I was uh, quite a very fast learner during right. that time. And I learned to, to play a song without my father knowing. And, right. and every time my father is around, he said, hey, Freddie, uh, pick up the book and read it. So I, I, I pick up the book and read it. But inside the book is a song book. Your you know? notes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm memorizing a song. But, uh, but, uh, okay. but my father would see that I'm opening a big book, big but book inside reading, it's, yeah. it's, a, yeah, it's yeah. a song book. So that's how I, I learned to sing. Uh, and play the guitar secretly from my father, right? Because he, he he insisted that I should be a lawyer until we became so uh, uh, argument. Uh, we we are argumenting always, always about it. Right. We, we have always arguments about it. And 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 one day I wanted to please him, and I said, "Okay, I go to school, but not law." Mm. I said, "I." You told me if if I don't want to take law, just just take anything. Okay. So I, I remembered you said you said that to me. So I said, "Will you let me study uh, electronics engineering?" Right. Because I thought that electronics engineering and music uh, will help you a bit. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll go because I, I I was thinking right. that. I might be able to in, invent a, a, a guitar amplifier right, <laughs> right. Sure, or sure. whatever. You know? yeah. So I went, to, I went to electronics engineer, but uh, everything they're teaching, I knew it already. Okay. Because I was also working during uh, weekends as an apprentice of my uncle Benny, right. who owns an electronic shop. So, oh, okay. So, so everything they're teaching in first year high school, in first year college oh, okay. of electronics engineer, I was learning actually in, in, the, in right. the electronic shop of my uncle. So right. I became the assistant teacher right. of my professor. Okay. Not so bad. I'm not learning. I was teaching wow. my, my, uh, my yeah. the, the students how to do it. So I, the, the, I lost interest. Right. Yes, I, I lost <laughs> interest. And after the first year, I decided that I should quit electronics engineering and went to my full-time singing. That's when I left home. I left my home right. because my father uh, always says that, hey, if you, if you are in my house, you have to follow my rules and regulations in this house. So since I cannot follow it anymore, it's only fair that I should get out of the house. So without his blessing, I took I took a couple of uh, uh, Levi's jeans and yeah. and, uh, and and some T-shirts and my knapsack bag with my guitar. Right. Left home, and I started singing at uh, at a place owned by a friend, right. uh, a friend's mother, uh, and I was making twenty pesos a night. Right. Very happy. I was singing. Yep. Yes, twenty pesos. <laughs> with free meal yeah, those and, and, and free uh, 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 lodging. Lodging, uh, yeah, right. Uh, so uh, I started uh, my singing career in Olongapo. Okay. And that's when I realized more and more that I did a lot of mistake mm -hmm. because I was alone. I have no relatives in Olongapo. So 
Uh, when I woke up in the morning, I had no breakfast. I have to tend my own breakfast. At lunchtime, I have to do my own lunch. I have to wash my own clothes. And so I'm missing home more. Yeah, sure. Because at home, I don't, I don't have to cook my anything, breakfast. Yeah. I don't have to cook my lunch. I don't have to wash my clothes. And so I'm missing home more and more. And one day, I was trying to watch TV, but uh, the, all the shows are uh, irrelevant to me. Then I turn on the radio, and even the songs are irre irrelevant to me. Mm -hmm. So I look at the corner, and there's a bunch of laundry. And then uh, the next to the laundry is my guitar. I pick up my guitar, and I always like to write songs. And so I pick up my guitar and my cassette recorder, yep, <laughs> the yep, mono the cassette days, recorder. Yep, yep, yep. I put on a cassette, and then I got my pen. And then I was thinking, uh, I said, uh, where did I came from? And I said, so then it, it hit me. I came from my mother's womb. Yeah. I was there for nine months. And I was born. Then I grew up. And then what did I do? Instead of making them happy, I gave them uh, heartaches. Mm. And from that position, I started strumming my guitar and started writing. And it says, nung isi lang ka, mundong ito, when you were born. And then I was thinking, I was with my mother's womb. Right. And then the songs came there. I write it, I wrote it, and then sing it, and play it back. And I was crying like a fool, right. say, listening to the song. And, and I said, this, I did this to my parents. You know? And I, I kept the song, uh, mm. but I was crying. Mm. And then the next day I listened to the song, it made me cry again. And I realized that I wrote a song from a prodigal son's point of view, right. asking the mother and the father to, to, forgive, forgive, to right. forgive him for every uh, misfortunes and heartaches that was given to them. Right. And that song is the one that then made you world famous. Yes. Right, right. How did your father feel about the song when he first heard it? Oh, that's the, I think that's very uh, sad because uh, my father uh, heard me once. I don't even know he was there uh, in Manila. Right. He, he came once because our mayor from Santo Tomas Isabela came down and he said, hey, I heard that your son your eldest son is a good singer, so, so where can we watch him? And mm. So my father wrote the mayor in, into the pub house I was singing. They took the back back seat, so right. I don't even know they were there and I was right. singing. And they, they heard how the crowd responded to, to me. Right. And, and my, my, uh, according to my mother, uh, my father said, hey, he's quite good, huh? your son is quite good, I heard him. Mm. And then one day when I came back from Mulongapo, because uh, once in a while I get, I get to, yeah. to, to, to take an off because right. they won't allow you for uh, a day off in Mulongapo. They, they, they want, they, you sing Monday to Sunday. So one day they allowed me, so I went home. And uh, I showed my father the, the lyrics of Anak. Right. And I said, Father, I, I wrote a song. And, and I, 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 I let him read, read the song and he was teary eyed. He was crying. And he said, hey, uh, good, you understand life now. And then, and then he put his arm around me like that. And he said, you should, but still, you should have finished your law school. Law degree, <laughs> yeah. fair, enough, fair, enough, fair enough. A lot of people think that music is powerful, but not as powerful as politics. What do you think? I, I think music is more powerful than politics. OK. I, because I have proven that too in my country. Right. Uh, because during the time that Nino Yakino was killed, they, they, the, the song that I revived in 1980 all of a sudden became alive all over again mm -hmm. in 1983 when Senator Aquino was assassinated. And right. People started singing it on the street all over again. That uh, even in, in hotels, Filipinos will stand uh, when when that song is played on the pipe in uh, 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 speaker, mm -hmm. and they they, they they go like that, mm -hmm. and and foreigners in in hotels are are thinking, 
this must be the national anthem. Mm -hmm. but because every time this song uh, <laughs> played, uh, all the Filipinos will stand and they put their fists like that. that. Bayan Ko, eh? Yeah, Bayan Ko. And right, right, the next right. thing you know, of course, I was all over the rallies right. uh, shouting for justice for Aquino, uh, justice for all. And, and all of a sudden, we are selling uh, Bayan Ko, the album, all over again uh, in the parliament of the streets. But this time, all the proceeds are being given to the Jaja movement, which is uh, justice for all, justice for Kino, justice for all movement. Now you have, you just used a very interesting phrase, the Parliament of the Streets. Yes. And you know your people power, and you are behind it as well, and yes. singing and all of that. So there's a Parliament of the Streets, and there's a Parliament Parliament, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you think of the Parliament of the Streets as being led by people who are really recognized. Like uh, you, as yes. leaders of society. Ja, the, that time. That, that time, time yes, right? That, that time. time yes. And then you have the real sort of leaders that the world recognizes as the president of the Philippines mm -hmm. and all of that. Now, what happens, you think, of course, there's always a tension, but what happens, you think, when the parliament of the street is compromised by all these leaders? Actually, that's what happened. Mm. Uh, the, the, the first people power revolution was very successful in in getting our freedom back, right. our democracy back. But, right. but the leaders who sat uh, as leaders for after the Parliament of the Street Revolution, uh, the, 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 the 1986 Edsa Revolution, did not deliver for the expectation of the, 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 the people on the mm. Parliament of the Street. So uh, the disgust came. Even up to now, mm. uh, there, there are so many uh, uh, dissolution because they thought that after the first revolution, the government will change, change and right. the government will become for the people, and by the people, and with the people. But it did not happen. Is government so 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 the people the the, the 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 people power the first people power was compromised because the politicians become greedy all over again, and and to think that at one time. They were with the parliament of the streets. They were a, a part of the parliament of the streets. But once they become leaders, they, they, are, they are being eaten by the system. Now, you've seen at least what? You've seen at least four or five different presidents by now? Oh, yes. From Maybe even uh, six. Uh, I, 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 met, I met personally uh, one, two, Makapagal, uh, Marcos, up to the present. Right. So I think all the presidents from seven, Makapagal right? to the you president. You met all of them, you know all of them. them. Yes. And yet, in some ways, I mean, I know each of them tries to be a bit different. Oh, yes, but they are a lot different, different from each other. Right, but yeah. overall, they've not been able to change Philippines very much, right? No, no. Why no. do you think this is so? Uh, like I said, because they, they compromise. They, they, they are, they are uh, uh, once they are there, they forget uh, 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 they forget what, what they were once before. All of a sudden, they are being eaten by, by the system, which is, uh, uh, you know, money, money, money. Uh, and, and once uh, I, I was there before, now I'm here. And now I see all the temptation here. And I cannot say no. That's what my, that's my uh, uh, perception. That's my observation, too. Uh, I, like I, I was saying, our vice president was the same. He was like me. Mm -hmm. He talked like me. He, 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 he believed in, in the same thing I believe in. He was very nationalistic and very patriotic like me. But now it's totally different. He is now the dynasty. He is now the, the, the guy being, uh, being accused of uh, uh, so much corruption. And it's not, his, it's not only him. There are uh, other people like, like him who have the same uh, views but all of a sudden, once they become one, like uh, the leader, the, 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 the political, all of a sudden, boom, it's, it's a complete turnaround. They, they forget about the people. They forget about the country. They forget about what they were fighting for before they become a politician. Freddie, a lot of theories of leadership focus on two different aspects. One is that a good leader works always with other good leaders, meaning it's a team. Mm -hmm. And the other theory says, no, a good leader must have that tremendous personality mm -hmm. and then the team will fall into place. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I go with the second leader? one. Go with the second yes, one? Yes, with the second one. Uh, the, with, the, with the leader that has this, this firm uh, uh, 
uh, belief that he will do this. So and, like uh, charisma, yes, and the charisma, uh, and and uh, the, the 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 dream that uh, I, I I'm because every polit political would say, vote for me and I will bring you the, I will I will give this to you and I will do this for you. I right. want to lead it that way, very firm. That's why I always look for the platform of government with any political political that I support. I want to look at the, the, the platform. And if the platform is very good, then I will support him. And I keep the platform. And later on, if the, 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 that leader will not do anything that he promised, then I will show it to him and show it on national TV and say, hey, where, where is this? Yeah, right. So I believe in the leaders, in the leader with, with the promise that he will make these changes. And then if he's very firm with that, then the people who believe in him will come and support him. Right. Now, you, in your music, I mean, Many of the Filipinos I've spoken with tell me that you are quite a kind of uh, stirrer of conscience, you know, through your lyrics. You make them think mm. and you mm -hmm. make them readdress the whole issue of leadership. Mm -hmm. Now, music, we know from history, has been used by corrupt and political leaders yes. to distract attention from mm. what they are doing. Mm. But in your case, you are attracting the attention, mm. meaning that you're saying mm. in your songs, mm. this is what this our is what's people are doing. Yeah. So in that way, I mean, you will be recognized as a society leader, mm. right? Mm. And some people tell me that you've even been asked to become, uh, you know, nominate uh, mm. yourself for presidency. Mm -hmm. How, what, what do you think of all this? I, I mean, I, I, hey, I wouldn't mind having dinner with you, yeah. president. <laughs> Be, being a politician is out of is out of my my uh, uh, agenda. It's, right. it's, it's, I'm not going to go in there. I uh, I saw how damaging it was to some of my close friends. Mm. But just for a moment, imagine. Mm. If you are the president of Philippines, mm -hmm. what two changes will you make? Number one, I will change the educational system of my country because it was not made for Filipinos. It was... Uh, Spanish, is yeah? it? Yes, not even Spanish, but also American. American, uh, okay. So, and, uh, uh, what will you do, just for a minute? I will, I will ask our best scholars, uh, young and old, mm -hmm. uh, to, to come up uh, with uh, education that suited for Filipinos. So is that because you believe that a good education system is one of the real answers yes. to a country yes. that's Yes, especially to okay. our uh, masses, especially okay. to our masses. Okay. Yes. okay, would you say it'd be free education for them? Yes, yes. Well, at the moment, it's getting very expensive, yes. right? Yes, we should, we should give, uh, which is, I, I had. I had the free education myself right. before, right. and our uh, free education before was really good. Right. W w you see the way the, uh, this is. I got I got some of my my my, my standing from from where I came from in sure. school. Sure. They taught it to me uh, to us before. And what's your second change? The you second change is that I would uh, uh, go back to our history and tell what the history of the Filipinos are, the way it was, the way it happened. No cover-ups. We don't. We, we don't have to cover, because uh, what we we'll do, what we did, is that we covered it from the beginning of our history. It was already told the wrong way. So oh. I want to say to, to, to rewrite the history also. Uh, hurt the people who, who who will get hurt, but this is the truth. This is what happened. Mm. But that's going to be a very very difficult time, right? It is. Right? It is because, because a lot of people will say, no, you can do that because. Uh, uh, we will have to change all over you know, and all these things and that. But, but, but I believe in, in the truth shall set us free. Free, okay. Now, do you think as a, as a country, Philippines is playing a leadership role in the ASEAN community? Or do you think the Philippines is now losing a little bit of its credibility in uh, the ASEAN role? The, uh, little by little, we are losing our credibility if we do not move. Mm. We, we do not move right away. I was saying this coming election in 2016 is very, very important for the Philippines. Mm. Not only we, 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 we need to elect new president, new vice president, new senators, but we have to do good in choosing our best politicos to represent the people and the country. Because if not, then we will become a banana republic. In now, your most recent years. song is about that, right? Real yes, I've written, on, I've written a song called Election Time Again. Right. And it, in, all that, uh, in that song, I, I am teaching them how to choose the right, politi the right political who will, who will represent not only the poor people, but also represent the interest of the people and the interest of the country. Right. So, 
when I was interviewing your ex-president Ramos, mm. uh, he said that one of the issues with uh, leadership is that sometimes it goes a little bit out of focus. So now maybe it's gone a out lot. of focus in a, a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. So, do you feel that as, as someone who's always, uh, in a way, been interested in how the politics has been unfolding and unraveling, and how it is being doing more and more, I suppose, uh, destruction to the nation as a whole? Mm -hmm. Because some provinces, for example, are not even developed, right? Yes. And some are now. very developed. And yes. there's a lot of uh, unequal you know, treatment and inequity going all around. Yes, yes. Do you feel that as a leader in the music scene, this is of tremendous importance to you as a responsibility. That's why like I write songs. Yes, that's why right? I write songs about it. Yes. yes Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank too. You. Wonderful.